the greatest nation on earth people seek to come to for that vaunted thing that we have, the freedom and energy and intelligence that we have in this country. And all 350 million people are being led by somebody who just barely knows that they're here on earth. <laughs> we know what the issues are. But I, you know, I didn't really come here to go into details about the issues. What I really came here to do, I came here to get something started. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back going to a new video. Today, we're going to check it out. I came here to get something started. Mark Robinson. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> I love this guy, Mark Robinson. I'm not going to interrupt this video. I just want you guys to watch it out and see how this man speak to America. We should be voting this man for vice president because he has great plans for America. Let's get this, let's get started. Fantastic, fantastic. How's everybody doing? Good. Very first thing we're gonna do as always, we're gonna give thanks to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Are there reporters in this room somewhere? I can't see through the light. It's the mainstream media here. <laughs> if you're here, I want you to hear this. Hear me. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you do in your newsroom. Mm. I don't care about your plans and your schemes to bring this nation down with your Democratic friends. Why? Because Jesus Christ is still on the throne. You may have your news cameras and your satellites mm. and your 24-hour news, but Jesus Christ holds the world in his hands and he holds me in it as well. And what he has for me, you cannot keep from coming true. true. It may not be the governor's mansion. It may not be any political seat, but you will not stop Jesus Christ's will in my life. Mm. So I do not fear you. Write your stories, tell your lies, tell your half-truths. But Christ is still on the throne. Mm. And because he lives in my heart and I live for him, I know whatever I need to do on this earth for him, it will get done. So we give him thanks first and foremost. Guys, all these other guys that come out here and talk to you about the issues, we know the issues. The wide open border, crime on the street, fentanyl killing our children, pornography in our schools. Mm. We know about the issues, the failing economy, the precarious place the United States find this, finds itself in on the world stage with its enemies. The horrible, absolutely dreadful administration that is currently leading our nation right now. It is mind-numbing to think that the most energetic, the greatest nation on earth people seek to come to for that vaunted thing that we have, the freedom and energy and intelligence that we have in this country. And all 350 million people are being led by somebody who just barely knows that they're here on earth. <laughs> we know what the issues are, but I, you know, I didn't really come here to go into details about the issues. What I really came here to do, I came here to get something started. <laughs> See, because we got a problem in this country. We got a bunch of clapple trap people that sit behind news media desks and want to talk about fake trials for President Trump. Turn the television on, they're talking about first one actor and then another actor. Talking about all manners of foolishness. Hmm. Talking about MAGA Republicans being the most dangerous people on earth. I don't know. I didn't see any MAGA Republicans on 9-11 blowing up buildings and airplanes. I don't think any MAGA Republicans were over in Israel murdering people. Mm. And I don't think a MAGA Republican gave them the money to be able to do it. Thank you. See, we got folks in this country that don't want to talk about the substantive issues that all of us face. The things that we just talked about, that wide open border, 
the precarious place we find ourselves with safety and security in the world's, on the world stage. They don't want to talk about your pocketbook. They don't want to talk about the fact that your children are in schools where we spend millions upon millions upon millions of dollars for those schools and the children can't read on the grade level. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to talk about the fact that every single solitary policy that they propose and then pass yields horrible results. They don't want to talk about it. Why? Because it proves an essential truth. It proves an essential truth. What is that truth? The simple truth of the matter is this. They call us the right. We sit on the right. Mm. And we not only get called the right and call ourselves the right and sit on the right, we are right. <laughs> We are right about every single solitary issue. When we say, shut that border down and deport those who are dangerous to our country, we are right. When we say, children should not be sexualized, we are right. And this nation knows it. When we say that it's your money, you earned it, you worked for it, the government should not be picking your pocket. We are right. True. See, we are right. Too many of us are ashamed to be right, though. Some of us, we go to work and folks start talking about politics and start standing up saying, I think Joe Biden's doing a wonderful job. <laughs> and he's a nice man because that President Trump is just mean. I just don't like the things that he says. He's just mean and arrogant, and he's a bully. If I hear that one more time, I am going to go crazy. This man is fighting. Let's list the people he's fighting. He's fighting almost the entire news media. He's fighting all the Democrats. Mm. He's fighting all the communists. Mm. He's fighting all the socialists. He's fighting all of our enemies across the ocean. And sadly, he's fighting half the Republicans. How is this man a bully? How is he a bully? You see, we hear that at work sometimes, some of us, and we're a little shy about stepping up, standing up, saying anything. People look at us and say, why are you a Republican? We say, well, you know, my mom voted Republican. And I like Ronald Reagan. <laughs> I think he did a great job, and I like Reagan. And so I, that's why I'm a Republican. We shy away from the truth. Mm. We don't want to look at that person and say, you know, well, wasn't it the Republican Party that was formed to stand up for the republic? Not the democracy like you see splayed on the news every day. You see, them folks want a democracy. They want the mob to rule. They don't want this republic. And they don't want Republicans standing up for the republic. You're going to tell them that, uh, yeah, wasn't it? Uh, well, they say, well, the Republican Party is the party of old white men. <laughs> it ain't coming off. <laughs> And while we're on that subject, wasn't it the Republican Party that uh, fought a war to free the slaves? How many Jim Crow laws were passed by Republicans? Mm. Wasn't it the Republicans who ended Jim Crow? Then you can take it even further and say, uh, so you're a Democrat. Why are you a Democrat? You know the Democrats were the ones that were in favor of slavery. They were the ones in favor of the Confederacy. They were the ones that created Jim Crow. They are the ones that made the laws and they are the ones that fought like hell to keep them hmm. until they found out a different way to enslave people. Instead of giving them welfare, instead of giving them slave shacks and, slave shacks and shackles, they decided they were gonna give them welfare checks and the ghetto. 
You see, there are truths that nobody wants to talk about. Not the news media, not the college, pro excuse me, the college professors. I'm getting excited up here, guys. Not the college professors. Nobody want the front row. Y'all better watch out, bro. <laughs> Woo! Spitting fire up here today. Y'all better watch out. Nobody wants to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it, and you should too. Mm. You should run and go tell the good news of why you're a Republican. Mm. You can take it all the way back to 1860 and bring it all the way up right now to 2020. You look at the states that are run by Republicans. Look at what Sarah Huckabee Sanders is doing in Arkansas. Look at what Glenn Youngkin is doing in Virginia. Look at what Ron DeSantis is doing in Florida and Greg Abbott is doing in Texas. Mm. Look at what the Republican legislature in North Carolina is doing and has done since 2010. And while we're on that subject, think about what North Carolina will do when Mark Robinson is the Republican governor. You see, there's a truth that's got to be told. Unfortunately, no one will tell it if you don't. No one will be bold enough to tell it if you're not. Yeah, I speak about this all the time, and when I do, I try to do it without shedding tears, but it's hard for me to do it. I tell my wife I have two great dreams. One great dream exists on this side of the earth. The other dream exists on the other side. Dream on the other side is very, it's very dear to me. And people think that I hate people. I don't hate people. I hate actions. Hmm. I hate actions that take advantage of people, destroy people's lives and destroy and wreck nations. I hate the actions. I don't hate the people. One of my greatest dreams as a Christian is this. And I take it to heart, and when I say it, I mean it. Hmm. You know, they tell me that when I die, if I do what God says on earth, that he has reserved a mansion for me, many rooms. I think about that room that he may reserve for me. And I think about myself in it. And if that place is like anything like down here on earth, maybe people would come and visit me. You know who I want to come and visit me? Of course, I love to see the heroes of the faith come. My mother, my family, those that I love. But you know who else I want to see? I want to look out my window down in my driveway and see Nancy Pelosi come walking on. <laughs> I'm serious. I want to see Joe Biden come walking up. I do. I do. I want to look down there and see my opponent, Josh Stein, come walking up. I want to look down there and see everybody who opposed me on earth, who called me an enemy on earth. I want to, I want to see them come walking up that, that driveway. You know why? Because it means they made it. Mm. Because they made it. Now, I don't want my opponent to make it to the governor's mansion. But I sure wouldn't mind if he made it to heaven. Because I don't hate anybody. And I want to see every single solitary person on this earth. I want to see their soul saved. Every single solitary person. And each and every one of us that calls ourselves a Christian should pray vehemently for their souls. Mm. That we would see them in heaven and forget about all this when we get up there. My second dream is this, and it's down here on earth. One day, years from now, now you look at them old photographs and you can tell what year they were taken. I want an old photograph to be sitting up on somebody's shelf in a home somewhere. I don't know where it may be. Could be here, some, some other place. 
And I want somebody to pull that photograph down and look at it and say, who is this man? And I want one of my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, or great-grandchildren, right here in the United States of America, to take that picture and hold it up over their head and say, this is my grandfather. Hmm. And I live in freedom today because he was man enough to stand up and give me the same kind of freedom that he grew up in. To me, that would be the single greatest honor on this earth. And I sincerely hope that each and every one of you would want to have that honor as well. Now, before I leave you, I want to leave you with this. Who are we as Republicans? Who are we as conservatives? Who are we as patriots? Who are we as MAGA Republicans? <laughs> I boil it all down to this. Earlier this month, we celebrate what I call America's St. Crispin's Day. D-Day, June the 6th, 1944. The spirit of Mac, the spirit of us, the spirit of the American patriot mm. is embodied in those boys in those boats. It lives inside of the hearts of each and every person in this room. It lives inside of the people who go back home and get politically active and are bound and determined to change the circumstances of their cities and their state and their nation. It exists in those moms who had the unmitigated gall, according to some, to go down to the school board and demand that their children not be sexualized. Mm. It lives in the heart of every patriot who decides to put their name on the dotted line and serve in office. It exists inside of Americans who love this nation. The heart of the boys in those boats on that day is literally the epitome of America. Mm. When times get tough for us, when you get scared, when you get nervous, when you think you can't win, think about them boys in the boats. Mm. Think about them bullets hitting that door. Think about the fact when that door opened, they didn't run to the back, they ran out that door. Bullets be damned, death be damned. I'm here to save my country. You think about them, you remember them, and you remember their sacrifice was not in vain because it lives in you, and it lives in me, and it lives in all of us. Let's let that energize us to save this nation one more time. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> this was an incredible speech, guys. Very, very, very powerful, guys. I feel like all Republicans ought to watch this. All Republicans ought to watch this, guys. This is incredible. This is lovely. I, I was really touched by his speech. I was really touched. I was moved. This... This is this man should be voted as a VP, guys. He's he's incredible. He speaks for himself. He speaks for me. He speaks for the entire America. This is what America should be fighting for. Exactly, the entire speech. Like this is what America should be fighting for. Exactly, guys. December we are going to vote in Trump. It uh. Other parties like it or not, either the Democrats like it or not, or the liberals like it or not, we are voting in Trump, guys. This really means a lot. This speech really pushed me and moved me. He just touched my heart. He spoke my mind. I believe he speaks. He spoke your mind too. He spoke the entire American minds. Because this is really powerful. This speaks of faith. This speaks of freedom. This speaks of liberty, guys. This is an incredible speech that moves. The June 6 experience was something that's changed America. And that liberation is what we still need more. This was amazing. Um, Mark Robinson, he... I love the man. I love his speech. And 
that's why I just want you guys to watch the entire clip without any interruption. I felt every moment of it and I know you guys also felt it. This is 100 over 100. Not written somewhere. He spoke it out for me. It's just coming out. He was just voicing that. He was motivating me. I felt, I felt very, very proud to be a Republican, to be a conservative. I felt really, really proud. It really means a lot, guys. It's really moved me. And I'm very, very impressed by this speech. And I know Charlie Kirk will be very impressed by this speech. I know Donald Trump will be very impressed by this speech too. This is beautiful. I love people who fight for America. The statement he made that when his, his grandchildren see, they'll bring out a picture of his father, of their great-grandfather, and say, this man fought for America. That is how I felt. We are the right side, guys. Republicans, we are the right side. Conservative, we are the right side. We have to voice out or else we'll be silent. We have to voice out, guys. This is a beautiful speech that ought to be played several times. It's beautiful. This is this is beautiful. And I love how he wished he wished the Democrats every single person. Joe Biden, he wished him to be in heaven. That is that is what we all want. That everyone, no matter our differences or our conflicts or our disagreements, we also wish everyone to be in heaven, to be at the right side with God. I love the entire speech. He first bring, brought in the name of Jesus before he started his speech. It was very, very impressive. I love this man. He does this something very, very incredible right now. And I am mesmerized by it. So guys, comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this video to as many as you can. Subscribe to our channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag. Like an old lady. I'm back wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, you in my bed. I got scales on.